Hello guys and welcome to the new tutorial from my studio on Envision Studio. Okay, this was not the best joke I could use for the beginning of this tutorial, so let's just forget about it and jump right in. I'm not going to show you all the things studio. Well, you'll have to patiently wait until I release the studio course on Learn UX. But here's a quick thought and a short um, video that is going to showcase some of the studio capabilities and also I want to kind of inspire you maybe in a UX way. So recently I've been receiving plenty of those GDPR emails and it got me thinking, can we actually improve the UI and UX of those 10 meter long forms, constant formulas and everything that we get as a bundle with each form on the internet? Well, here is my quick approach to make the UI cleaner and to incorporate those consents in some easy and fun steps in the form. So let's get started. So I've created an empty document in the studio. Let's option click the plus icon to make it bigger. Now I press A to make an artboard and I select MacBook Pro uh, as the size of my artboard. Let's rename it to the first one. This will be my first um, step in the form and uh, let me fill it with color. But I won't use this fill option for the entire artboard. Instead, what I'm going to do is simply draw a rectangle and the size of the artboard. And this is because it will be easier to transition between the states of this rectangle, for example, to, to change the color um, between different artboards. So uh, let me select the color I've prepared and I'm going to draw another rectangle here and uh, fill it with white color. So let's do it like so. I'm going to move it to the center. Now let's uh, introduce some radius. This is very intuitive. And now let's have a drop shadow. So uh, I'm going to use a Y of 20 and blur of 30. So this is uh, what I use all the time. I simply uh, use Y and blur. And I start from 510, then I go to 2030. And if I want even bigger one, I use 3050. So for this, uh, it might be uh, 30, 50, but I obviously change the opacity from 50% to about 25%. Now let's use the text tool and I'm going to uh, just say consents made with, and we're going to paste something here in a second. Now let's move this layer to the top and I'm going to change the size. The font is really cool. It's poppins and the size maybe 33. It's OK. Now another frame. I'm going to paste some text that I already have in my clipboard. And obviously I need to change the size of it. Now it looks pretty cool. And I'm also going to change it from bold to just a medium. OK. Now I'm going to press R once more to create a rectangle. And this will be my input field. And I won't have anything apart from this. So you might say that I'm not GDPR compliant and I should like do it like so and have all the consents and checkboxes and radio buttons here. But uh, bear with me. I'm just going to uh, use the stroke for that. And let's have a stroke of maybe uh, four pixels. It's pretty cool. I need to have some brighter color. And also, I'd like to have a radius like this. Now, uh, let me option drag this text frame so that I can uh, say that here you can enter your email to get some goodies probably. And if you have any call to action inside of this field, it's even better. So let me change the opacity of it to 30%. I simply press free and maybe uh, let's stick to medium. Now this looks pretty cool. Now what I'd like to do is uh, just press Z and move here. Now let's create a simple button here. I'm going to start with a rectangle and press uh, Shift while drawing so that I can uh, I can have a square. Now let's change the radius so that it's a circle actually, but it's quite important that it's not the circle from the beginning, but it's a square. You'll see why in a second. Now let's press Control C so that I can um, pick the color from the background. And now let's create an arrow. Well, oftentimes you'll find yourself searching for an arrows in an icon library. Well, it's so easy to create an arrow with just a pen tool. I'm going to press P and you'll hold Shift. Now I'm going to return to accept it. Now let's press P once more and create an arrow like this. I think it's OK. So let's press Return, Shift click to select both shapes, both paths and change the color to white. 
I'm going to change the weight to 2 and I think it's pretty cool. So let's select those paths and also this uh, rectangle that I've created and let's group it all together with Command G and uh, give it the name of button. Now this button, um, I'm going to just press Command 1 to see how it looks. All right, and this screen is almost ready. Let's have the final touch. <laughs> so this is a little hard that I'm moved to the top and change the size. I'm going to shift option drag and put it here. So we have nice spacing and we have the first element of our form. Now let's select this artboard and duplicate it. We can press Command D to duplicate the artboard and just uh, create another state. In this state, I'm going to simulate user entering the email. So let's uh, put John Doe at learnux.io. And I need to change the opacity. So let's press 1, 0 so that we have 100%. So here we have two states for uh, our form. And we can animate them inside of Studio. First, let's change the name of this second artboard. And now we can select the button and press C and point to the second artboard, this will actually uh, create a transition between this element after a tap and navigate to the second screen without any motion for now. So let's press save. Now we can preview the transition with this play icon. So let's press preview and now, so now if I click this little guy, you'll see that I go to the next artboard. This is without any transition, but if I select it once more, I can change the transition preset and select uh, this type of preset to fade in or just slide or push. But I can also switch to motion, which is more advanced and you can set the duration as well as delay and also edit the timeline. So we're going to do that in a second, but let's just create another artboard. So we're going to have another artboard with uh, the consent screen and uh, this will let you display, for example, some um, consent here instead of this email. And what I'm going to do in this screen is just uh, simply I need to select, I need to uh, command click this rectangle and I need to change the width of the rectangle. But first I need to unlock it so that uh, I can independently modify width and height. And this is why I've created the rectangle instead of the oval. Now you can change it and uh, obviously now what we're going to do is simply uh, delete those shapes and I'm um, going to copy this uh, text field, put it there, put it on top in the layers list, I mean um, above the button and say I agree. This might be, you know, this might be an easier way and a more polite way of asking for a consent. And on the other hand, it will just, you know, won't it won't distract your user it will save some space in the design so i think this is pretty cool so let me copy and paste the consent that i have now let's change the font slightly so that we have a smaller font here and uh, i need two lines of text just like this so this is pretty cool when you enter your email and you press this little button you'll have the consent and you can agree right there so what we need to do right now is create a transition between those screens and I want obviously to uh, address this button once more and I can also add an interaction like this instead of pressing C. After a tap on this button, I want to navigate to screen number three. Let's change the name of the screen. Now let's select this button once more and add the interaction. After a tap, I'm going to go to the screen number three and instead of default transition preset, I'm going to switch to motion. So this is a bit more advanced because you can set the duration of the animation as well as delay. And also you can edit the timeline. But for now, let's just stick to uh, the default settings and let's see how it looks like. So if I click on the button, you'll see very smooth transition. And this is out of the box in studio. Some things are fading, but some things are even morphing. If I reset it, so press Command R and click it once more. Take a look at the background of our button. It's simply expanding and it looks really cool out of the box. And this is because the layers that are that have the same names between artboards are auto animating and Studio basically tries to morph them if possible. So this is all we have to do here. And uh, now let's create even uh, more artboards. This is going to be our board number. This is going to be artboard number four. Let's change the name. And what we're going to do here is kind of an in-between. So let's press Command-2 to zoom in and maybe Command-1 once. 
And what I'm going to do is I just want to uh, make this disappear. So we can create a transition between those artboards. I can simply change the opacity of this element to zero. And I can even move it, for example, slightly to the left hand side so that we have the effect of sliding to the left. Now, uh, this shape is going to expand and I want this shape to cover whole input text. Let's select this guy first and we can copy the values. So we have 57 height and uh, I've copied and pasted the width and 57 here, maybe 59 is okay because we have this border in the center like this. And rectangle too, by the way, we're going to just uh, make it disappear on the screen. So this uh, little input, we can move it to the right hand side so that we have a smooth animation. But I will also copy that and change the opacity here to zero. And now I'm going to paste it once more, move it like this and change the text so that we have thank you for your consent. Let's move it in the center and we've drafted our animation. So now we can uh, select this button, the I agree button and create an interaction. After a tap, let's go to artboard number four. Let's create a motion. We can see how this motion looks out of the box. So let me preview that and click. So it already looks great, but you know what? We can do even better. So let's go to this animation and let's edit the timeline. So here's the timeline view and you can see the timing of the animation. It's 0.3 of a second and all the animations between the layers, those are all the layers from Artboard 3 and from Artboard 4. Some of the layers are linked. For example, this rectangle 3 layer, we have only one layer, but there is a layer obviously on uh, Artboard 3 and 4 with the same name. And that's why those layers are linked. You can unlink them and now you have two layers. But the advantage of linking the layers is that if you scrap on the timeline, you see that those layers morph into the other one. So we have a smooth transition of the green background. And to be honest, everything looks really smooth here. What you can tweak is, for example, the easing and the timing of the animations. So you can uh, select ease both or you can select, for example, pop. And now you can preview the motion and you can even loop it. Let's see that. It's happening quite fast. Let's preview that in 0.5 uh, of the speed. I think it looks better now. So maybe our animation should last uh, not 0.3 of a second. Let's pause it, but maybe 0.5. So what you do is you go to the very topmost um, thing in the timeline and you just scrub it. So we also have to match the timing of this animation. So as you see, you can move the things around. You can, uh, for example, make one animation shorter and the other longer. And uh, now let's go back to the screen and let's preview the animation in uh, the preview window. And I think it's really cool. So let's leave it like this. And this is the in-between screen. So it means that we uh, want to create one more screen. I'm going to duplicate this screen, not the rectangle, but screen number four. Let's change the name to five. Now let's zoom into this screen with command two. Now let's select the text. I'm going to copy this text and move it with shift and up arrow to the top. Also, I'm going to make it disappear here and let's paste it. Now let's change it to all set and move it to the center. I want this all set text to be animated as well. And let's first change the color of this text to black. Now let's copy this text and paste it here on this artboard. So the names of those layers are the same, so they will be automatically linked. Let's move it to the bottom like this and change the opacity to zero. So from this artboard with auto transition, it will simply appear from here and move up. And this text will disappear and move up here as well. Now let's change the size of this uh, background and also change it so that we have yellow color here. And uh, we can preview the transition. We don't even have the transition right now. So let's select the artboard number four and create the interaction for the whole artboard. Instead of tap trigger, we can select timer. So let's wait for some time and automatically go to screen number five. And the amount of time we're going to wait is maybe 0.6 of a second. 
let's turn motion and we're going to edit this in a second but now let's preview how it looks out of the box and honestly there's not much to change let's restart the whole prototype and let's see it step by step so you enter the email then you press this button you agree to the consent and wait for a second you're all set maybe let's add another visual element at the end of this animation and uh, let's create a novel here I'm gonna create an oval like this and the fill will be this yellow color that we have uh, in the button I'm gonna make it simply make it bigger so let's position it here maybe in somewhere next to the button and copy and paste it in the same place uh, to this screen let's move it to the bottom just uh, above the rectangle that's the background and here we'll have this guy this oval also below this rectangle one so that you can't see it right now but we're going to make it bigger like this and another visual element i'd like to add is some shapes so the shapes i found are on sketch up sources which is a great website with uh, sources for sketch and uh, you can download the sketch file and simply open the sketch file with studio or you can open it in sketch and then copy and paste assets from sketch to studio this is very simple and on this website you'll find plenty of free great looking resources so let's get back to studio and now i've copied from sketch a group with shapes let's paste it in here like so uh, i just need to change the opacity maybe to 30 percent now it's pretty nice let's copy it from here and what i can do is i can click through the artboards and simply paste it here and there as well as here but i think that here we'll have to change the opacity so that you can see those guys better like this and let's move the group here this group has to be there below the oval to i mean above the oval and let's move it from there so that we can see the shapes and they are not overlapping the text okay this is it so now before we preview the animation let's tweak the last animation that we have here so from this artboard we have auto transition let's edit this timeline and see what happens you can basically switch between uh, the timeline views and uh, let's scrub through this and you'll see that we have we don't have exactly effect that we want with the background because this oval should be scaling instead of simply appearing like this and this is something we need to fix we need to select both uh, oval from uh, artboard 4 and from artboard 5 somehow studio didn't realize that those are layers that have to be linked so we have to link them manually let's select them with uh, command click and now click on link layers now those layers are linked and we're gonna have a really nice animation going on in the background so everything is happening simultaneously right now but I think it's the right effect that we were looking for so what we can do is maybe tweak the easing maybe we can see how it looks while the easing is set to pop and uh, play it in repeat maybe let's slow it down a bit so that you see that it's actually popping the button is squeezing and the end of the animation is so much better so we can leave this uh, with uh, with that kind of timing so let's change to 1x and 0.3 of a second is maybe maybe a bit uh, fast so I prefer animations on website which last for 0.3 of a second but there is quite a lot going on in here so maybe we're gonna move it slightly so that we have 0.4 of a second and let's go back and preview the whole prototype so in order to do this let's first make sure that the first artboard is the home artboard and uh, click uh, outside of any other artboard uh, if you want to set any artboard to be home you simply right click on it and select this first option so now let's click play so here we have our clean and simple form you can enter your email and then you have the sequence of uh, different consents so you can have multiple consents here if you agree to all of them you have really nice animation and now this window can close so I think this might be an inspiration for you for creating nice and clean forms in the future and I hope that it was a nice lesson of studio as well so thanks for your attention and I'll see you on learnux.io